Hey all, so today I'm going to be installing a pop and lock um, on my 2014 GMC Sierra. This, um, this will allow the tailgate to be unlocked and locked with your key fob and uh, with the interior lock and unlock buttons as well. Um, this doesn't come standard on uh, GM trucks for whatever reason. It does come standard on I think the 2015 Fords and it's been standard on Rams for I don't know how for how long, at least a couple years now. But anyways, this is what I'm gonna install. I'm gonna be using a guide from uh, one of the GM truck forums uh, where a guy wrote up a good write up. But I figured I'd make a nice video for it. Um, for starters, you gotta get your tailgate uh, back panel open, which is this part here. It's just a couple of um, small torques. So like I said, it's just um, about eight of these Torx bits, you can see there, I zoomed in. Um, and it's a T15 uh, size, at least on my truck. Uh, they should probably all be standard size. But there's two here, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So go ahead and remove those and get that panel off. Uh, so you can see I have the back panel open and there's the actuator that um, locks and unlocks the tailgate uh, right now you can only lock it with your key it's not electrical or anything like that but it can be locked but you know I have a tonneau cover and sometimes I forget to lock the back and you know this is an easy cover to actually remove it I want to be able to lock it every time I walk away from the truck so what comes with this kit is a the electrical actuator that gets hooked up and mounted inside there um, some wiring more wiring um, some, uh, I think they're called scotch locks, which is what you're going to use to tap into your wiring in the cab. Um, looks like a little uh, retainer clip there. And then a new um, door flipper armor thingy guy. I don't know the name of it. But um, So here, I'll give you a nice shot of the inside of this. I'm going to kind of walk you through what's going to be swapped out and um, mounted in here. I think what we're going to be doing, I haven't got the directions all the way read right through, this arm up here is going to be replaced with this one, and then um, that electrical actuator here is going to be mounted somewhere on this side, and then it's going to allow us to flip that up and down when you uh, hit the lock button. So the first thing that gets removed is this arm here. Let me focus on it for a little better. And um, there's a little retainer clip held on there. We're going to remove that retainer clip and then um, install the new one and, in, and then reattach that retainer clip that comes with it. So with the old um, arm off and the new one on with the new um, retainer clip, that's what it's going to look like. And the next thing you're going to want to do is re remove this bolt because that's where this... Um, actuator is going to mount to and you can actually see it uses um, it's not really a hole, a hole but there's a piece of plastic here that's kind of like going to line it up so it's going to bolt down here and this the other hole here will kind of line up so this is where that piece of plastic is going to come through and then you're going to put the bolt through there and, and tighten it down so I'm going to go ahead and attach that if you look more closely at this thing um, it, this is the actuator motor that will pop and unlock or pop and lock all right so I got everything installed here and um, I'm just gonna point out something that might be partially annoying um, so this is the actuator it's mounted here it's it's on there solid if you recall back to that little like arm that we took off so here's the stock arm that we took off um, the new one is back there. Now, the first time I installed it, for whatever reason, I could not get the tailgate to lock with my key. Now, with this new um, mechanism in there, when... Hold on, I'm going to show my tailgate first. I'm going to show you. When you um, lock and unlock the tailgate, let me find my keys, with the key at least, um, sorry, the truck is filthy. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna behave a little bit differently than you are used to. So before, you used to 
turn, pull your key out, tailgate was locked. Now, right and then back to the middle is lock, as you can see, and left to the middle is now unlocked. So, the next step of this is to uh, hook up all the wiring. I'll walk you through that too. Um, so you see these two connectors here. They're going to get funneled down. It's hard to see right now, but there's a hole at the bottom of the tailgate for wiring. And um, if you have a backup camera, that's where you're going you're to funnel the wires through that and up to the front of the cab and uh, hook them in. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that now for you. So this kit comes with two um, wire harnesses. One is really long. That one there, and one is uh, considerably shorter. Um, this is just to make it easy for you to work with the wiring for this. So, the shorter one is going to come up through that hole. You see that wire there, um, and connect. Sorry, fiddling with my strap. It's going to come up through here. There's also a hole on the backside where it'll go underneath the bed towards the um, spare tire. So you want to put the end with the two. Uh, butt connectors in this way and then once you feed it up to up here you know connect them throw some electrical tape or some shrink wrap on it whatever you want to do and then the other end will go under here through the bed and then you can connect it to the one end here and run it all up to the cabin you know wire it underneath they give you some uh, some zip ties with the kit that you can used to hold the wiring harness up along with the factory wiring harness. So, so um, one thing I would recommend doing is before you put all your wiring up and have it all neatly routed and whatnot, go ahead and make sure it works. So there's plenty of wire here to run it up just along the side of the truck, hook it into where it needs to go, hit the lock button, see if it locks the tailgate. Plenty of room to do that. So I'm going to do that now, but I wanted to show you. One other thing is it might be easier to lower and move your um, spare tire just so you can get underneath um, and route it eventually uh, so I went ahead and did that and push it over to the side then I'm gonna run that up along the side of the truck here I've already got the kick panel removed which is just along here on the driver's side door and there's also another panel here on top that um, hides the wiring now you can tell my truck's filthy dirty that's my husky mat nasty right okay lots of salt on the roads in Illinois so here is the other panel there's a, a bunch of wires behind there so you want to remove that as well and it's just held on with little clips not even clips it just kind of has a, like a lip um, you might need a screwdriver or something to pry it but not difficult so alright guys uh, so once you get the, uh, the panels off this is what it looks like a wiring mess um, and uh, I've located my two wires that I'm going to use for the um, the scotch locks. And uh, so, just a word of uh, advice. So this panel goes over the top of this. It locks on with these side clips. Once you get the one side off, um, the other side wants to do this kind of. And what you need to do is just push, go each one of these. Just give it a push back, and it'll release from. Um, it's clip um, on the back side here, so you'll, you'll probably be sitting there trying to get it off just wiggling it like that It won't do it. You need to push back and it'll release free um, Now another thing is that this panel actually comes To about here You can see the back panel kind of covers that and that it's just a pain in the butt to remove um, so what I actually did was just popped up this weather stripping and it allowed me to move this up out of the way a little bit just to get back to where I need to be. So I've since put the uh, weather strip back down, but if you're having trouble, just know that's what you need to do. Alright, so screw using these things, these little scotch locks. These are junk. Um, I tried about four different times to get a good connection with these and they just didn't work. So what I ended up doing is um, stripping off a portion of the wire, obviously this will be cleaned up when I'm done, stripping off a portion of the wires I needed and then attaching um, my blues and greens directly to um, there. And it works! So there you go.
The wires you're looking for are a big brown and yellow with a brown with a yellow stripe is where your green's going to go, and um, gray with a green stripe is where your blue is going to go. Um, I'll see if I can get it better. There you go. And um, they are thicker wires than the normal in this uh, wire patch. So um, refer to the guide I'm going to post in the description to um, find it a little better. <sighs> Getting this thing back on is kind of a pain. Um, when I was uh, doing this, the wiring harness was all... Um, it's, it's uh, zip tied from the factory. I removed a lot of the factory zip ties, but then I added my own on after the fact. And I put a couple um, just to tighten up the, the wire bundle because it really is kind of a tight fit once you get this thing on and getting it back here into its spot is really kind of a pain in the butt. Um, you're just gonna have to fidget with it until you can actually get it down. I'd say start at the back, get this back one, uh, the, there's a clip under here in the back, get that one looped then kind of work your way around um, on the back and get the ones on the back side um, clipped on first and then you can come and start here and clip um, down on all of these um, until they're all secure. So um, once you have the wiring harness uh, running from the back of the truck you can you know follow the OEM wire harness from the back and just run it underneath the truck. I'm not going to climb underneath it's really dark you won't really need to see but you can figure it out. There is uh, a wire harness from the back of the truck that is already there that you can just follow all the way up underneath the truck to here, um, right underneath the cab. And then you're going to come through the floor at that grommet right there. That is the um, parking brake um, wire. So you're going to have to poke a small hole in um, that grommet and then fish your cable through. Um, and uh, then you're then you're in the cap. If you uh, you know you make the small uh, the hole small enough, it should not leak. It's not really a, a big deal. But that is right underneath the carpet, right behind your panel here, so you can see that. And then that's the, that black cable is just running here with the two connections, which are right here. I'd say try to stagger your connections. Um, that way you don't have a big mass here, uh, right in the middle of one spot. I did that, and I have two. I like a lump right here. You can, you can't really tell, but I'd say you know connect one of the green or browns or green or blues here, and one of the other ones maybe back here. And again, you're looking for in the stock wiring harness, you're looking for a thick brown with a yellow stripe, and then a gray with green stripe. And they are notably bigger than the rest of the wires in that harness. Um, Again, look at the, the link in the description to a forum post on gmtrucks.com if you're having trouble identifying those colors. <clears throat> so now that we got this all buttoned up, I'm going to go ahead and put the kick plate back on. It does work. I can show you it working right now. I haven't put the panel back on the um, uh, tailgate yet just so you can kind of see the mechanism in action. So, uh, lock. There it is. I just hit lock again just to show you that it moves. And unlock. There it goes down. It works. And I'll show you how it does here. So we got locked. And one does my driver door, two does the rest of my doors. Unlocked. So a good addition, I think. Um, to uh, your GM truck. Um, post up if you have any questions. Subscribe and thanks for watching. See ya.